and welcome to a nice romantic weekend in the Peak District. Now, I'm a UK traveller and I love the Lake District. That's the classic part of the North that everybody knows, but the Peak District is just as beautiful and I'm always chasing down the Pride and Prejudice sets. So if you're interested in the English landscape, then my videos might well be for you. So we start with a lovely drive from my home to Chatsworth House. I'm trying to fit in as many visits to different places as I possibly can. I have a lot of work to do in the peak, so I book holidays with the intention of doing some work. I can't help that. I'm an ASM artist, so different settings and places that I can film and record are always beneficial. Now, it's early spring, and I've dressed for a summer's day as I keep doing this. I managed to find a jacket and scarf in the boot, thank God. <laughs> I was really hoping I could have a picnic on the lawn, but not a chance of that. I don't know why I do this to myself. I'm just desperate for it to be warm, summer, late spring. So I'm just imagining it even started raining. So we ended up sitting in the little sensory garden where there was a bench. It was absolutely dead. This was a weekday. The times I've been to Chatsworth before, it's super busy with tourists, which I don't mind. There's so much land. But literally, I was sat there eating the picnic I'd made in the rain, just regretting life. <laughs> but the Chatsworth house itself is beautiful. I didn't go inside today. I have on a previous video been inside. But the outside is still so good. The gardens are beautiful. I would go as far as to say this is the best house in Britain to visit. And I think it's very quintessentially British as well. If you're looking for something that's got real English vibes, the indoor and the outdoor is just as good as the statue of Mr. Darcy there. You can see, which I think is the real one from the film. And apparently on these buggies here, you can get a nice buggy and blanket situation tour for about five pounds, something ridiculously cheap. I'm not sure if that's true. I've been trying to get so much footage of my UK travels just because I do so much of it to make travel content on Instagram, YouTube. I'm trying everything at the moment, but I'm really struggling. I'm only used to making ASMR, so this is kind of a new kettle of fish for me. You can see how lovely the trees look though. The buds are just coming through and this is usually when I feel so, so happy to see the plants coming back to life. The clocks are about to change. The days are going to get longer. It's such a relief. This British winter has been really tough for me. This time last year I was in Australia, so I missed all of it. And to be honest, it's been really hard. It's made me think about what I'm going to do next winter if I can actually handle another three or four month stretch of just really dark nights and short days. I'm walking around. My ankles are absolutely freezing. I don't know why I did this to myself. In hindsight, I would have just worn jeans. That's the other thing that's really crap about cold weather. You just can't wear cute outfits in the same way. All you care about is being warm. Now, I had to keep taking ASMR content here and I've got this green cloak I keep wanging out of my bag, shoving on and getting my partner to take loads of videos. It's absolutely freezing work and thank God the place is dead. I might show you some of that footage now just quickly to see what it looks like. It's pretty embarrassing, but honestly, I've got no shame anymore after doing this for several years. The things I do in public spaces to film my ASMR content is um, ridiculous, to be honest. The gardens here are the best ones I've seen in many of the old manor houses and things that I've visited. It's just so well kept. I actually saw the gardeners working away and all these daffodils, they're all over the place. It's just so beautiful and I'll definitely be making a trip back in the summer when there's more leaves and flowers. I came on like the 1st of September, so it was still technically summer. The colours in that garden were gorgeous. I'll put some pictures up of what it looked like. It was amazing. I got some lovely content, so I might try that again. I really wanted to film an ASMR video on the lawn, but it was just so cold and wet, I physically couldn't do it. And I'm desperate to do more of that in public, just on my tiny little microphone for 10, 15 minutes. Because I just think that's so fun. I did it a lot when I was travelling abroad and I want to show more UK landscapes. A lot of my viewers are American and it's fun to show them what England's like. So I walked around the rock garden, my boyfriend's favourite bit of the whole house, for a long while. Got tons of footage of the place and using my new camera. I've just paid £400 for a camera and I'm trying to tell myself it wasn't a waste of money and works a lot better than my phone. After three years, I really can't work from my single iPhone anymore. It's exhausting. Anyway, after visiting Chatsworth, we decided to go check into our Airbnb. It was in a place called Monyash, not too far away. They even advertise on the Airbnb that it's nearby Chatsworth House because it's such an idyllic place to visit. The peaks are lovely. It's very, very landscape, very typical English countryside, which I love so much. And this is the Airbnb. Isn't it the most gorgeous little cottage you've ever seen? And clearly people come here 
for the Instagrammable vibes and I don't blame them at all. It's so nice to stay in a place that's just beautifully cosy and comfy and picturesque. I don't like going out, I don't like drinking, so I drank about 15 good cups of tea, had lots of food and played this game Hitster, which is really good. Very, very exciting, I know, but honestly, I couldn't think of anything worse than going out, trying to sit in a pub and have fun. I don't have any fun sitting out at night in the pub. All I'm thinking about is getting back to bed as soon as physically possible. In the mornings, I was getting up at the crack of dawn and filming some ASMR. Here's a little bit of what I was filming, a and b video that I brought loads of props for, and that went down very nicely. And this is what I'm wearing today. I immediately threw my jacket on after taking a little bit of footage, by the way. My God, it was freezing. Again, back in the scarf, back in the big coat. And today we are going to the Heights of Abraham, which is a cable car thing I found online. I had no idea this kind of thing was in England. And it just goes to show that there's some amazing things to do that are just chilled and fun. You don't have to be a family or an older retired couple to do these types of things that are more nature-based, a bit more culture-based. I'm not going to lie, I was a tiny bit scared of the tiny, tiny cable cars sailing along the landscape. I felt a bit anxious to get in one, but when I did, it was okay. I managed to get some footage. It stops in the middle and lets you enjoy the view, I think. And they said in the summer when this is busy, they put six people in these little cable cars. My Christ, I do not see how six people can get in there. I really don't. Without dying of heat stroke, I really don't think you should do that. <laughs> the quieter days are definitely for it. There's so much beautiful landscape to see up there. I tried to film a little bit of it, but I ended up feeling a little bit shaky when it stopped in midair. I felt a bit rocky. Maybe not for anyone that's got a bit of a height problem. Yeah, so there's me trying to have a nice little picture. I did get some nice footage, actually. The light's really good, but maybe that's just my foundation. I don't know. But there's lots of nice little places to visit up there. I didn't realise it. The staff are so nice and helpful. And there's a beautiful little cafe. This is now one of my favourite cafes in the country. I love rating and assessing cafes in England because it's about so much more than the quality of the food or the quality of the aesthetic. It's got to be a good mix of everything and just do what it says on the tin. So many places don't do that. And it was lovely. There was loads of cakes, tea, they even have a nice lunch menu. You can enjoy lunch with a beautiful view up here. And they've even got a lovely little play area for kids. I just thought it was great. A great day out. I really, really enjoyed it, and I would recommend it to anyone. Everyone I know didn't even have a clue it was up here. They even have an amphitheatre and stuff like that. I don't know what kind of events they've got in summer, but they advertised a Christmas event, which I thought would be really good. I always feel like I've struggled to find events in winter that I want to go to because you just don't want to do anything because it's cold. But that mindset is so annoying because it means we sit around waiting for summer, which I'm trying to really not do anymore. Anyway, this is the view of the cable car sailing by. It actually looks really cool and fun. We went up to the highest point in this little tower, lots of horrible narrow stairs. I was hoping to have a moment without anybody up here, but we were all kind of squashed like sardines up there. But yeah, I thought it was a really lovely day out, and after a few hours I'd had enough, ready to go back down on the cable cars, feeling brave enough again. Oh, there was actually a little mine I wanted to show you that people used to work down. This used to be a place for Victorian holidays, kind of like a little theme park. I don't know if there was a cable car till the 70s or something, but people used to get up here anyway and have a view of the Peak District. And the little village, it's in Matlock Bath, was such an attraction. And you can see why, because when you go down, it's very picturesque, very lovely. It's kind of like a seaside town without the seaside because it's got amusements and things. So I wanted to have a little tour around there, find a nice little cafe or a chip shop or something like that. God, it looks so scary when you're up there now. It gives me heart palpitations. There were some lovely little shops and places and then there were some that were just full of bric-a-brac and rubbish that made me really think it was like the seaside. They had some chips here that were cooked in vegetable oil, which I could then enjoy. I love chips from the chippy. I had a little look around all the shops. This little old apothecary shop is something that I've been thinking about for an ASMR video idea. And the lovely old Georgian architecture as well, you can see. This is the Lover's Bridge, I think, that gets lots of crappy reviews online for being just a bridge. I mean, what did people expect? But I actually think it's really, really cute to have a picture and a video, and I got some lovely footage on here. And what along the other side, it's really nice and nature-based. Obviously, when there's more leaves on here, I think this will look really, really lovely and picturesque, and possibly in autumn as well. 
So back to my little cosy Airbnb for another evening in. It's the best thing about it. I rent these nice places so I can chill in them. I don't really want to go out in the evening. I keep saying this, but I like to normalise it because you're just exhausted after a day out and you feel guilty for not going out. I certainly do every single time. So I like to say it every single time. It's fine to just not want to go out and to just watch Love Island Australia season five, which is an elite series, by the way, because it's still not that big in Australia. So it's actually still really good. I was really, really tired in this nice four-poster bed that has a lovely view of the little pond outside. Really nice to wake up in. And I did have a really nice sleep after a busy day. This is the next morning and I look very done up in the next video. That's because I've already been up two hours filming content while my boyfriend laid and chilled in bed. This is the content I filmed, a little tea room video, which was really nice in this setting. And there was lots of bird song, which I really enjoyed. I have to carry a lot of props with me for this sometimes. And then I laid in bed, ate a pan of chocolates and raspberries, which was even nicer. Now, we were leaving now and I had to think about what I wanted to do with my time. There was a vegan cafe nearby that I wanted to try out and also I wanted to get some footage in this nice dress. It was so cold and rainy, I knew I couldn't wear this today. I will wear a dress on the worst day of the year, but I was just so cold, I couldn't do it. So I put my cardigan and jeans back on and went to Bakewell, which, look here, it's hailing. It's hailing and then it's sunny and then it's raining and then it's hailing again. British weather is crazy. If you just wait 10 minutes, it will change again, as my granddad always said. So afternoon tea in Bakewell is what I've booked. I booked a vegan one in advance. It was really good. I really enjoyed it. And the thing about it is I wanted to have it in a nice, pretty summer girly dress, like an English lady. I don't know what is wrong with me. I just really wanted to do that. And when I couldn't, I had to wear a typical outfit. I was a bit disappointed. But the scenery was so lovely. And I love old villages like this. However, this was a Saturday and it was so busy. It wasn't even a particularly nice day. So it just gives you an idea of how crazy and chaotic British places are. They're not big. This isn't a big country. And the parking situations are crazy. So if you're not used to driving country roads in England, I would be wary about that. Look at this little cafe. How cute is that? So quintessentially British, as I like to say. I had a little pint before my afternoon tea. I love cosy old pubs. It reminds me of when I was a little girl and going with my dad all the time. I could have pint of after pint of Diet Coke from the pub. I just bloody love it. That's just me. I, I'm obsessed with Diet Coke. I've been trying to get off it this year, actually, because I just drink so much of it. Now, on my walk, I saw lots of beautiful little shops and places to go. It was just so adorable. I wish it had been quieter so I could get some lovely footage of all the shops so I could make Instagram posts and reels about it for my channel. But it was just so busy, which is a good thing. I like to see places really busy and thriving. And this was a cute little tea room, the lavender tea rooms. Really nice products, beautiful setting. And people obviously booked here with like big parties for afternoon tea. I just thought it was really, really sweet and nice. And the owner was so nice when they accommodated me with only two days notice for a vegan afternoon tea. Not an easy thing and not something I like to do. I just asked the question and they said yes. So I was super happy about that. I had look around a few of the little shops before I was getting on my way back to Yorkshire. We were going back the way through the Winnet's Pass, which is one of the big things you want to see in the Peak District. Now, a lot of people hike this and get out there and have a look at the nature, but I'm going to look at it from the safety of my car. I don't hike. I don't go to Peaks or Lakes to walk and hike, and I'm sorry if that makes me boring, but I can't be asked hiking and walking. A little walk half an hour outside makes me so tired and exhausted in the wind. I did get out of the car here to show you just how windy it is. And look, a lovely viaduct there, which I know people like. It's a bit of a Harry Potter vibe. But it's so windy and cold, you're just absolutely shattered at the end of the day. Can you be bothered? Now, this is the Winnet's Pass. Doesn't it look absolutely stunning? I tried to get as much footage as I can. My camera versus my iPhone. I got nervous halfway through my camera footage that it wasn't doing very well. So this is my iPhone footage, which very sadly looks a lot better. <laughs> what a waste of money that camera was. I'm only joking. But yeah, how beautiful. But these people walking on the road to get the views and stuff. They're crazy to me. It's bloody freezing and wet and it was about to lose the light as well. So this is the end of my little weekend away. I hope you enjoyed seeing some of the views around the Peak District, which is more of the Derbyshire area of England. And I hope you consider a visit up north and don't just stick to the south in your visit to England. Goodbye.